Welcome back for another video in my Dutch tool chest series. This one I'm going to be making a lid. So a lid um, is a, just a big flat piece of, of wood that goes on the top of a chest, but it's a little bit difficult because it will tend to flex with the seasons, like as the humidity changes. So it'll cup and move and kind of shrink and, and expand. So I need to do something to um, resist that movement in the wood. So the usual way to do that is to put some cross grain wood on the lid, either um, on the underside of the lid as battens, which is just strips of wood that are screwed to, to the underside of the lid and run cross grain. And that will tend to resist the movement of the lid. But in my case, I want to put saws on the underside of the lid. So I, I don't have space to put those strips of wood underneath. So there's another way to do it, which is a little bit harder. Um, and it's called breadboarding. And basically that is putting, cutting off the ends of the lid and putting cross grain uh, pieces of wood on the ends. And basically you use a mortise and tenon sort of setup to attach those. But the end result is you don't have any additional wood on the underside, so there should be plenty of room for my saws to go. So let's get started making the breadboarded lid. I'm starting off by marking where I will cut tenons onto the ends of the lid. I'm using my Stanley 78 plane to shave down the tenons here. The tenons will have three longer fingers, so here I'm cutting those fingers out with a coping saw and my dovetail saw. And here's the finished product with both tenons cut on both ends of the lid. Here I'm cutting the matching mortises in the end piece for the lid. So first I'm cutting the three long mortises that will fit those, those three long fingers on the end of the lid. Now I'm using my combination plane to cut the shorter part of the tenon. So this will go the full width or length, whatever, uh, of the end piece. So I'm just cu basically cutting a groove in the end piece. To attach the end pieces to the lid, I'm going to be using draw bores. So basically, uh, these are wooden pegs that will go all the way through uh, both the mortise and the tenon. So the first step is to drill 
pulls all the way through the end piece. Now I'm marking where the holes should go on the tenons. Now I'm drilling the holes in the tenon. There's an important thing to note here that I'm making the holes about uh, a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch closer to the shoulder uh, than, than the marking that I made, and that will tend to uh, pull the joint together as you drive the dowels in. Um, also, I make the holes on the outside, the two outside holes, a little bit wider uh, so that to allow for the lid to move a little bit with the seasons. Okay, now it's time to drive the dowels in. So I just have three dowel rods. I sharpened the ends of uh, the dowels just a little bit to make them easier to drive in. And uh, you'll note I'm also putting a little bit of glue, but only right in the middle around that center hole because, again, I, the glue joint, um, I, I want to allow it to... Uh, move with the season, so I don't want glue on the whole joint, just right there in the middle. I've allowed the glue to dry, and now I'm flush cutting the ends of the dowels off. Now that the ends are attached to the lid, I can go ahead and cut off the excess uh, width of the ends. And here's the finished product, um, all it with the ends attached and everything planed and looking nice. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to be working on figuring out how to put the hinges on the lid of my chest. So what I've done here is taken a scrap board, which is about the same width as my lid, and I've just clamped it, temporarily clamped it. Um, in place. So I couldn't have a, the full lid on here because then I wouldn't have room to actually clamp um, like here and here onto these strap hinges that I'm going to use to mount the lid. So <clears throat> basically I've, I've clamped it in place so that I can move it up and down, kind of see how it falls. Um, I can figure out how much I need to mortise out of this back edge for the hinge barrel to fit. Um, but the biggest thing is I can move it back and forward uh, easily, and I can kind of see um, the best place to mount it. I can hold up um, this big saw, because I'm going to want to mount these to the lid eventually. So I want to kind of make sure that the hinge doesn't interfere with the saw handle or anything like that, and that everything fits correctly. Um, and I can do it very easily with, by just clamping temporarily in place. Once I have everything positioned perfectly, I'll uh, mark where the screw holes will be, um, where the mortise needs to be marked out, and then I'll just basically do the matching thing on the other side for the other hinge. There's going to be two hinges just like this strap hinge. Um, and then we'll get it mounted. Here I'm carving out the mortise for the hinge, mostly for the hinge barrel. Uh, so I'm going to do as much as I can with saws and um, straight chisels and then I'll come in uh, for any curved spots with the uh, gouge at the end. Alright, so I've got the strap hinge mortised in. Um, as you can see, I kind of did a little circular um, kind of mortise for the hinge barrel back here, and then just kind of a straight mortise here so that this part of the hinge could come down flush with the top of the case. So it took a little more time than I thought, but um, I think it turned out pretty well. Pretty happy with it. So 
Um, I just need to do the other one. And the last step here is to mount the lid onto those hinges um, and get it all positioned correctly. So I just brought that um, onto my kitchen floor because I needed a lot of space and it was easy for me to just move the lid around to um, where to position it. And here's the end result with uh, the lid attached. And you can see it here open. And then I've got a shot of it closed here. So hey, thanks for watching the video.